Okay, this one's going to be the Battle of Astarpa River. Now, this is uh, Hittites versus uh, Arzawans. Um, the Hittites are supposedly the favorites in this, and historically won. Let's take a little look at force composition as well as the kind of odd setup I did. So the Arzawans, these guys over here, had to set up first. Now, they have a heavier infantry contingent swinging back here, which I put in the center. I put a light screen of uh, heavy chariots. These are a new unit we haven't seen yet. There are no runners in this one. Uh, this may be the scenario John was talking about uh, online on the uh, on the geek, and then a flung out wing of light chariots, which I'm hoping to use as kind of I don't know uh, a means to direct the battle into the infantry. Perhaps I I, I really don't know. Uh, but that's what I settled on because you got to kind of keep your wings together and putting all the chariots just in front seems to lose some of the advantage. So, in reaction, what do the Hittites do? Well, they're able to set up second. They put their infantry in the center and it's a weaker infantry. It's the, I didn't give it the same depth. You can see, actually, I've got shock infantry even in the rear. The idea there being, you know, your common reserves type idea. Well, the Hittites don't have enough to cover the frontage and have that kind of depth. They're relying on their light infantry archers to maybe provide a little bit of extra uh, hitting power. But then, they faced the light chariots back here with their own humongous heavy chariot contingent. And we'll talk about the difference briefly between those two, at least from what little information I have right now. And they threw their own light chariots out here as a wing planning to uh, try for an enveloping attack. In the same sense that this wing was built out, but that got countered. This wing could be countered by these chariots in the front, the, the initial screen. Now, what is the big deal with these heavy chariots? And they're kind of weird because the light chariots come with these composite bow archers that are very, very powerful. So, so far we've seen them kind of ride by their enemy and, uh, you know, be able to inflict whatever losses they like, run away, and then go recover. So if an army was all chariots and had no infantry, I think it would be very, very potent against the infantry. The heavy chariots, on the other hand, are only armed with javelins. If we look at these, we'll see. They tend to have good tactical quality, a little higher on average than the lights. Uh, over here we have them as well. Uh, and, and, and we can see, especially the Arzawan lights, have some pretty crappy values uh, mixed in there for tactical quality. The javelin is much, much less effective it only goes to one hex. Its firing values are way worse than what the uh, uh, what the lighter uh, chariots have. But their pass through value automatically does hits. So at very close range, they could be somewhat devastating. So slicing through the enemy chariots, they're powerful there. Even more scary though than perhaps the pass-through, which I'm not sure if I really want to use, because when we look at the Chariot 3 versus the Chariot 2, it hits on the 9 sharp. And likewise, the, the Chariot 2 can't attack back, but that's a, that's a potent chart, and it's somewhat effective against uh, other forms as well. Against Chariot 3, it's a 7. They're designed and heavy enough that they can hit with some, uh, you know, significant effect as shock weapons, and they may be the tool to slice up the chariots. Problem? Well, the light chariots have a speed of nine. They can run away from these just like they can run away from infantry, and it might actually be easier because they only got to run two hexes each time. As long as they're getting hit from the front, they'll be able to keep their distance. On the turnover table, 
they're a little bit less stable. They've got uh, the wheel positions in a worse uh, manner and well, they can't go speed 9, but even at, at speed 6s and 7, they're running up where the 8s and 9s are for these uh, lighter chariots. They don't have the fire and run capability. That's an interesting, another aspect that's missing. Anyway, this should be an interesting addition. I think it's going to be more complicated, although I misplayed the runners in terms of getting the rules right on them. It's a matter that's in the errata, um, rather than it wasn't clear from the rules is basically what it is and I'm too lazy to look at the errata until I stumbled on it essentially but uh, these heavier chariots definitely add a completely new weapon system it doesn't seem like hey they're just chariots they're not uh, they're very different the light chariots are, are, are probably the most extreme version of, of a new weapon system for this whole uh, game but these heavy chariots are sort of a compromise situation, more like Cav in a lot of ways. And we'll see how, how they uh, influence things and whether or not they're able to pin down those lighter chariots in any sense. Uh, it's going to be a tough game. Okay, position at the end of the first turn. We're seeing some deformation in the, in the formations. First of all, the heavy chariots uh, over on, geez, I can't remember the name of them. Starts with an A. Arzawans. Um, moved very slowly and actually slowed down the heavy infantry. I'm not sure why I did that. I was thinking of moving slowly and doing a turn, but I didn't do the turn and I didn't push forward fast enough. Hey, sometimes weird stuff happens in a battle. And I'm okay with that. I don't think it's a huge uh, problem. Then their light infantry... Oops. These guys are moving forward so that we're not out of command. Uh, their light infantry um, didn't get, got to move before the heavies. So you see some sort of space occurring there. And finally, uh, well, they're kind of pushing the light chariots forward. But I'm thinking about swinging the lights over to face the Hittite lights and the heavies to face the heavies. I'm not really thrilled with having the um, the division there, or perhaps I'll send the infantry after the heavies, the heavies across. This is actually what I was thinking, and try to use the lights as some sort of flanking central position. I'm not quite sure how this is all gonna fall out. Uh, basically, the fact that the Hittites got to set up second by the scenario, although there's an option for players taking uh, turns with the wings, allowed them to have kind of this advantage in positioning that they wanted with the heavy chariots facing uh, the lighter chariots of their enemy. Anyway, I'm not sure that it's safe with this closing of ranks to make the exchange at this point, but perhaps running those light chariots around the edge and firing on the heavies and then trying to swing around the back is a stronger position. Um, and then slice my own heavies towards these lights and well I don't want the infantry hitting the infantry particularly although I have the advantage in the infantry so that may be the best move. So there was no initiative benefit or penalty or whatever on this first turn uh, or second turn Got a couple of quick actions. First was the uh, light chariots for the Hittites, who've kind of strung themselves out uh, in, in a flanking line, just looking to gain some positional advantage there. And then the heavies went charging forward at the uh, A dude, I don't remember, as something. Um, lights. And most of them just withdrew, and they, there's a slight advantage here to the withdrawing. Um, the light chariots are able to fire at two, hex, at, at two hex range as they're withdrawing. So they were able to shoot at the heavies as they came in. And they caused a couple of points of damage, but some weren't able to get away exactly. Uh, what's behind them is too dense and they couldn't withdraw. So they're stuck and being hit by the heavies here. And we're going to see the effect of that. Well, it 
resulted, ooh, that was blurry, it resulted in an engaged status here and one of them destroyed. The heavies also got to throw their javelins before they entered. Uh, the destroyed one chariot actually not fled from the battle. That'll be five route points there. One. Oh, one more thing I forgot. The leader died. Uh, the Azov Thoth's leader. What the hell are they called? Azra, Azo, Arzawan. Arzawan. Yeah, my poor eyes. Okay, a little bit further along, the Arzawan heavy cavalry slides over using a momentum action. Now, here's the problem. The lights are out of command without their leader, but they can still do some shoot-bys. They destroyed the one heavy that was there, um, well, routed it, and then slid over. They're still positioning themselves to face the heavies in the front so that they can withdraw, but... If they withdraw, they open up the infantry uh, to a possible attack over there on the flank. Mm. Not much choice either way. Uh, it's a it's a bad combination. The heavies will still hurt the infantry, and the light chariots just can't hold up against them. That's pretty clear. Yeah, but the heavies don't want to stand up against the infantry. So the infantry was actually able to chase them back a little bit. They're also able to slam into this one, which cannot withdraw because it's engaged. But it also doesn't have to make a tactical quality check. Not that it's liable to fail that. Uh, but it does get attacked by the infantry. Which is not an advantage. But it's still... Ooh, that's not such a good chart. Six, eh? Those heavy uh, heavy chariots are pretty potent. Mmm. Ah, oh, well. I charged. I don't think I will again. So it's kind of interesting. The heavy infantry doesn't do terribly well. Now, they did okay. They traded shots two versus two. It, it's probably to the infantry's advantage to try to attack the chariots this way. But the, because... Otherwise, they don't do any damage to the chariots, and the chariots ride by and hurt them. Uh, but the chariots over here against the heavy infantry are only on the three tables, so they're not any good attacking the infantry formations. Interesting, interesting uh, decision-making here. I thought, well, okay, I'll get the attack off. I don't know if withdrawing is all that important, but certainly... Attacking with them with shock combat is not a good idea. Heavy chariots drove the lights back. Now the lights got the fire back. I'd say that's okay, but because of the oblique angle that we were advancing at, these guys were able to get flank uh, withdrawals on a number of them. So they've taken more hits than they uh, generated firing on, on the advance. We're running late in the turn here. We'll See, there probably aren't a lot of cups there. Ooh, or chits there, I could see them. <laughs> yeah, all that remained were the light infantry moving forward, and then the shock infantry here getting its action. Now, it had a problem. It already moved. Additional movement with that shock infantry would mean taking hits. I'm not even in range to attack yet, so I stood back. But I did a rally action, which failed. Um, got some things to change. For example, this. Interestingly enough, the range on those javelins is only one hex, so he gets to recover his low missile. And we also get our leader back, which was kind of painful not having. I don't think it matters where he is. My overall commander's way back here. And I'll just put him over there. And that's the end of this turn, and we're going to load it up.